On I would say, you know, the, the road that I've I've been on has been completely unexpected. <laughs> like when I look at every aspect of my life, even where I'm at today, it's unexpected. You know, it's like how did this happen? <laughs> but it's not wasn't my plan, you know. Remy Adeleke was born in Nigeria into a very wealthy family. His father was a well-known businessman and engineer and his mother was an American from New York City who met him on one of his many business trips. My family had everything. We had cars and nannies and drivers and uh, uh, my dad, he engineered one of the first man-made islands in the world. <laughs> so yeah, I am this kid whose dad created an island. Um, so yeah, that's that was what my life was like. Uh, my mom, she didn't want for anything. Uh, we traveled the world and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good life early on. Remy's family wasn't just wealthy. His father was also a chief in the Yoruba tribe, which made him Nigerian royalty. So not only was I born into, into literal wealth and prestige, but we also had the figurative title of, of, of royalty and, and riches and all, all that sort of thing. I haven't really followed the tradition so much so, but technically, you know, I'm a prince. <laughs> The family's wealth and status also made them a target for those jealous of what they had. The Nigerian government at the time was notoriously corrupt and decided to strip Remy's father of all his assets, his home, his wealth, even his family's private island. His father attempted to fight the government in court, but died weeks later. Um, so we went from, from rich to poor uh, in that moment. And uh, my mother was just like, there's no way I'm raising my kids here, here in Nigeria. And so that's when she permanently relocated my brother and I to the United States, specifically to Bronx, New York. You know, I, I tell people all the time, you know, my mom, you know, um, she did a great a job of masking the reality of what had happened. Um, best best uh, uh, analogy I could use is it was as though my mother created this movie set and on the movie set everything seemed okay <laughs> right but when you walk off the set you know it was that it was chaos you know there were times when my mother would give my brother and I a bar of ivory soap and say you know what I don't have money to to to, to do laundry you know you guys wash your underwears and socks in the sink you know there were times when my mom didn't have enough food to feed herself she had just enough time, uh, food to, to split between my brother and I she would go hungry throughout the night um, and I remember going with my mom to her rent office and and then watching her plead for extra time to pay the rent because she couldn't afford it. So it was a struggle. It was, it was really, really hard. Even at eight years old, Remy said he'd never thought he'd escape poverty. Feeling trapped in his new life, he turned to crime. At first, as a way to steal things he wished he could afford, but soon branching into serious crime, settling into selling pagers and throwaway phones to drug dealers. Then one day, everything came crashing down. Yeah, yeah, I sold a drug dealer a um, um, bunch of phones and, and, and pagers that were supposed to last for a certain amount of time and only last for a fraction of that time and that was because, you know, the people I was kind of working through, the company I was working through, caught on to my scam. And uh, they started cutting the, the activation uh, uh, time so the bill would cut off. So I sold this drug dealer, like it was, had to be about 30 phones and uh, he came to my house and threatened my life and uh, you know that was a huge wake-up call for me because at that point my mom was in the apartment she was asleep and you know that's when I just looked at myself after he threatened my life because I knew his his personality I knew he would kill me if I didn't give him his money and I, I said you know I'm gonna give him his money back and I got him his money back in a day and then I decided I'm, I'm getting out of this game because it's not worth my life or my mother's life so that's why I decided I'm done with all illegal stuff no more drug dealing no more cell phone stuff I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life <laughs> but uh, I'm not gonna do this anymore <laughs>